Hey guys, Dark here. Today I'm presenting you a new TH11 base. I haven't made one of these in like months. So I thought it was finally time to give you guys an updated TH11 base. Please don't forget to watch the base analysis, because there I will explain each and every placement of the base and I'll also answer any questions you may have. So now I'm going to let the speed build play, see you in the base analysis. Let's do the base analysis. First and foremost, the town hall is securely shielded in the middle compartment of the base since we want to save that one star and the loot it contains. A standout feature of this base is the abundance of compartments. They're practically everywhere, having so many compartments helps us slow down the enemy's troops, often causing them to run out of time or getting them stuck on the walls. Most enemy troops, like giants and golems, tend to get trapped by the walls. Now coming to the defenses, they are placed in such a way that they cover the whole base and the base remains strong from all the sides. The mortars are set up on the outer compartments of the base to defend against attacks like barge and mass goblins, they're strategically placed to cover most of the base, except the core, which doesn't really need mortar protection since weaker spam troops usually won't get that far. Every outer compartments of the base is fortified with archer towers, positioned with good spacing between them. This ensures solid protection against both air and ground attacks. This setup spreads the defenses evenly, making the base effective against all kinds of attacks, whether from the air or ground. Proper placement of wizard towers is crucial for a strong Town Hall 11 defense. They're among the most important defenses, so it's essential to position them where they're well protected and can cover most of the other defenses. So, we've placed them in different compartments. In this base you can see that the wizard tower's range covers most of the defenses, which is exactly what we wanted, 
When you're creating or using a base it's important to check the wizard tower's range. It should cover more than 3 or 4 defenses. Otherwise, you might need to rethink their placement. Now, for air defenses, we've separated them into different compartments to avoid getting hit by lightning spells all at once. Cover almost the entire base within the walls. When combined with other air defenses, this base becomes a beast against air attacks. We've also placed air sweepers to enhance defense against attacks like lava loons, mass dragons, and electro dragons. The Eagle Artillery is in the center of the base because it's the most powerful defense at Town Hall 11. Its range covers the entire base except for the first seven tiles, which are protected by other defenses. Inferno Towers are essential defenses after the Eagle Artillery, so we've placed them near the core, where they're well protected. They cover important buildings like the Town Hall and Dark Elixir Storage, and important defenses like the Eagle Artillery and Expos. You should configure their mode based on the enemy armies you face. If you're up against armies with more troops but lower hit points, like miners, bowlers, and witches, use the multiple mode. If you're facing high hit point troops like electro dragons, pekkas, and golems, use the single mode. We've placed cannons strategically where they're needed, balancing the base for effective ground defense. Expos are protected in four compartments near the core, set to target both ground and air troops. That's because we've been targeted by both ground and air armies, so it's not worth setting them to ground just for a bit more range. At Town Hall 11, we have two bomb towers, each in its own compartment. They have a short range but do damage like giant bombs. That's why we've placed them near Wizard Towers and Multi-Inferno Towers. When they work together with other defensive buildings that deal group damage, they can really make a difference. For instance, when groups of miners or hog armies come into a compartment, these armies are already damaged by other defenses, and the bomb tower acts like a giant bomb. Then, the Multi-Inferno and Wizard Tower finish the job. When it comes to storages, we've spread them out across multiple compartments. Many inexperienced base designers put all the storages in one place, making it easy for attackers to grab all the loot once they breach the defenses. In our base, the storages are in different compartments, so the attacker has to take out the whole base to get all the loot. Also, we make sure not to put the same type of storages on one side of the base. For example, if we put both gold storages on one side, the attacker can grab almost all your gold by destroying just that part, so, we alternate their placement, just like in this base. As for traps, we've observed many attacks and strategically placed spring traps and giant bombs in compartments based on how attacking troops move. This makes our base stronger against ground attacks. We've placed bombs to take out wall breakers, which can disrupt an attacker's funnel, forcing their troops to go for the outer trash buildings, ruining their attack. All seeking air mines and air bombs are spreaded near the air defenses so that they can help our air defense against air attacking troops. Seeking air mines target single troops but at high damage, causing a headache for lava hound armies. Air bombs target multiple air units with area splash damage up to 208 damage points, causing a serious problem for balloon and minion armies. In regard to the outer buildings, we've placed them alternately to avoid grouping the same type of collectors together. Most people don't think about this, and they end up making collectors an easy target when placed together. So, we've spread them out to make it harder for attackers to take them out. That's it for the base analysis. Even if your base is strong on its own, having defensive troops in your clan castle is a big help. They can disrupt an attacker's troops and buy you more time. So, make sure to have clan castle troops to maximize the central clan castle's potential. You can find a link in the description to copy this base. That's the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.